Sarah. I was a sophomore also, Will and I were classmates. Um, this is my sister, Lara. She's 18 months younger than me. We're, we've been best friends for forever, very close. Um, I was in a math class that day, uh, very quiet, and heard uh, bombs going off. Very big explosion, the kind that would hit you in the chest before you heard it. Um, we thought it was a senior prank. We had no idea what, what it could possibly be. This wasn't something that we drilled for. This isn't something that we even had an awareness of. It was kind of the first kind of ground zero of school shootings. Um, we just went back to work. We kept doing our test, and a few minutes later, our, our um, baseball coach came running down the hall and clearing rooms one by one. He said, you guys need to get out of here. Somebody's shooting. And that took longer than it should have to register in my brain what that actually meant. Um, I, I didn't even know how to react to that. Um, we, did, we did tornado drills in Colorado. We didn't do shooter drills. So getting under your desk was probably the worst thing we could have done. Um, we got up and we ran out of that classroom and as fast as we could ran through the main hallway and out the front of the school. I was able to get out and um, kind of waited in a field with a bunch of other students. Uh, nobody really taking charge, kind of just mass chaos. And a few minutes later we heard more gunshots. We heard about 16 rounds and saw the SWAT team backing up to the front of the school and that's when it really became real to me what was happening. Um, it was a terrifying experience, like Will said, probably the worst day of my life. Um, it's something that I could play scene by scene to this day. This is something that we still deal with. We still have post-traumatic stress. We still uh, go into the mall or into a, a grocery store or go into our own kids' schools and think about what would I do if this happened here? And sometimes panic about that. And so it's something that we want you to know is, is a very real thing. It's, a, it's not something that you get over. It's something that will be with you for the rest of your life and you'll have to learn how to deal with that and live with that. Um, that's part of the reason that we're here. We, we want to uh, affect as much change as we can and sharing our stories is one way that we feel like we can uh, make a difference. We can make this more real for people. We can urge people to make changes and, and keep our kids safe. We all have kids in public school, so we want that more than anything. We would never want our kids to have to experience what we have. So. Um, I'm Laura. Sarah's younger sister. Uh, I was a freshman at Columbine and I was in the lunchroom when it started. It was around 11, 15 and we had just barely started eating lunch and all of a sudden everyone in the cafeteria got down under their tables and we just were on our hands and knees under our tables and just kind of waited and started hearing some pops in the background and then the janitor ran through as fast as he could and said everybody run. And they were outside, like Will said, right outside of the cafeteria, and they came in the doors in the cafeteria. Uh, so I headed the other direction. I started running, and I ran upstairs and found my best friend, and we went to the choir room, which was just right at the top of the stairs, to find her sister. And we went in, and they were still singing. They had no idea what was happening. And the teacher just, I mean, it was pure chaos, but the teacher ushered as many students out of a different door in that, in that room that would follow him. And for some reason, my friend and I hid under some chairs for a few seconds and realized it's not a great place to be. And so we went into the choir room office, which is just a very tiny little room, no windows. Um, we ended up being in there with about 30 other kids, literally just packed in like sardines. You couldn't move, you couldn't sit down. And we put everything that we could in front of the door to keep the shooters out. And um, we ended up being in that room for about four and a half hours and heard everything. The shooters were, they came into the choir room, they were shooting just right, what was that? Oh. Uh, yeah, they were shooting right, right by us, and back then, it was 1999, I know for some of you that seems like a long time ago, um, there were no cell phones. There, I mean, very select few people had cell phones. It was not a common thing, even for parents, it wasn't. 
but there was a girl in, in that room that had a cell phone, and she called the police and said, something's happening, you know, please come help us, we're trapped in this classroom. And they told her, you need to turn off your phone, they could be tracking you, we don't know what's happening, you just, you have to turn it off and just sit there and wait. And before she did that, she called her mom, and she just said, Mom, I, something's happening, and I'm stuck in a, sorry, <clears throat> and I'm stuck in a closet, and I, I just wanted to tell you that I loved you because I might not ever be able to tell you that again. And then she turned off her phone. Um, like I said, we waited in there for four and a half hours, and at that point, we pretty much thought that was it. We didn't think anybody was coming. The shooting would die down, the bombs would stop, and it would get really quiet, and we'd kind of take a deep breath of calm, and then the bombs would start going off again. Um, finally, after a long time, the SWAT team came and they rescued us. They were pretty brutal and um, I'm sure it's done much differently nowadays. They ended up taking us out the cafeteria, out the doors that the shooters came in. So all the glass was shot out, there was a flood in the cafeteria, backpacks and food floating everywhere, and we were taken out right where the shooters started. So we were forced to walk over several of our classmates who had been taken that day. Um, it's kind of like ripping off a, a big band-aid that we've worked so hard to put on our healing to come and do things like this. Um, but we do it so that we can share our story so that this is something that's taken very seriously. I know that it seems fun and you're getting your makeup on and you can go and be crazy and run around, but this is real and this is great training that these law enforcement and administration has put on for us. And so um, we're grateful to be here and we hope that you guys take things seriously. If you have concerns about your school or your, your community, talk to somebody. We can't create any change if you don't speak up and say anything. And that's all of our duties.